Good morning, everybody. My name's David and it's so wonderful to be here and have the opportunity to share with you this morning about all the virtue and we're going to be looking at diligence. Okay, so to everyone here at Southern Life that is able to be here in person, it's wonderful to have you all. And for everyone at home that's tuning in, it's wonderful to have you join us as well. So I pray that today is going to be a wonderful time for us all as we unpack God's Word together. Now, I've called today Diligence Matters. Why? Well, in our second slide, it tells us a spiritual transformation is not an important part of life. It is life. So last time we were together, I mentioned about a challenging journey God was taking me on during this lockdown period. When through the book, The Emotionally Healthy Leader, I've got a picture of that up on the slide here. God was calling me to do less with him, but spend more time with him. Now this book, it's available for Koorong. It's only $20, so it's pretty cheap, but it's amazing the journey it's going to take you on. And I really would encourage you to, to grab a copy of it and have a read. You could even borrow mine, I don't mind. But today, I wanna unpack this journey that God's taken me on a little more and share with you how this week has also unfolded in high school. But before I share my story, I wonder, what does diligence mean for you? What's the first thing that comes to mind when I say the word diligence? Type it into the chat. James will let me know what you're thinking. Usually, when we think about the virtue diligence, we think about a good work ethic. But this is too of a narrower vision. As Christians, we are, are called to pursue Christ with diligence. So on our next slide, diligence implies conscientiousness, industrious, focus, perseverance, and zealous. Diligence is about where we put our attention and our energy. The opposite of diligence, well, that's negligence, slackness, idleness, laziness, procrastination, or as a general term, being a couch potato. Seeking God with diligence in your walk of faith leads to spiritual growth, a greater love for others, a greater love for Christ, a greater understanding of the gospel and God's love for you. Our spiritual transformation, it's not an important part of life, it is our life. That's what God's asked us to have. The virtue diligence plays such an important role, it's woven into every godly person mentioned throughout the entire Bible. Study the lives of Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Joseph, Esther, Paul, Peter, and you're going to find diligence. Moses said he couldn't do what God was asking him to do, and yet Moses one of the most revered people in the Bible. I think of Paul, the transformation. He wanted to go and persecute the church. Then he became the biggest ambassador for church once he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. You got Peter who denied Jesus three times and yet become the cornerstone, the rock, the foundation on which God built his church. Even today, God calls you and me to pursue him with diligence. So I want to welcome us back to school. Okay, so on Tuesday marked the first day back at school following 11 weeks of learning from home. So we had balloons decorating the front fence and the staff were all positioned at the entry gate welcoming all the students back. Returning to school was filled with a lot of varying emotions. Why? Well, I don't know if you heard the news, but Albion Park High had a, po uh, a positive COVID case the Friday before. Now the school went under deep cleaning over that weekend and it was closed on Monday. So Albion Park High actually, just like the rest of Greater Sydney, went back to school on the Tuesday. So Tuesday was our first day back. So as you can understand, there was trepidation, some ongoing COVID concerns also. Now, the school had done a tremendous job keeping families and students updated with the latest news, which was wonderful to see. 
But there's also a lot of adjustments required about us returning back to school. Schools return to stage three, and this means only vaccinated staff are allowed on site. So no parents or volunteers are allowed onto the school grounds. And it also requires two separate school cohorts. So we've got years seven to nine, and then years 10 to 12. And that means there's staggered school start times, separate lunch and recess times. So that means playground staffing for each year group is essential and there's a designated playground area for each year. The complexities behind the scenes are enormous. The extra demand on staff is huge. Now I was speaking to the principal on Wednesday and he actually told me he needed a power nap on Tuesday afternoon when he finished school. He was that exhausted and we had a really good laugh because I did too. You know, it was a very heck hectic day, but a very blessed day at the same time. Now, once again, my role within the school is to float. So I float between staff and students. Now, whilst I was working remotely, the school wellness team and myself were phoning parents and students to see how we can actually assist them getting back to face-to-face -face learning. Now, just take for a moment, if you receive a phone call from the chaplain, right? all of a sudden you think, Wow, what is going on here? The chaplain's phoning me. And it, it's kind of, kind of a bit conflicty, right? Confliction. There's challenges there. And it was amazing how God then helped overcome those challenges once I started saying to the school or to the parents, I'm actually ringing to find out, how are you actually doing? How's your student, your son, your daughter doing? Because I'm here and the school's here to help you. And then it just opened up a wonderful vast of conversation and, and it changed the dynamic of that conversation. So following all these conversations, what we've put together, what the school's put together, is we've put together some passes, some, some step out of class passes. And the idea is that we don't want tensions to build up between staff or the students. So the school's got these safe and secure space within the library where the students can spend 10, 15, 20 minutes to regain their composure. And as the chaplain, I'm on hand in this space to support and assist the students and also help them get back into class. Can I say the openness, the honesty of students in this space has been so God inspired and it has been such an honor for me to hear and to sh have the students share their innermost what's going on. It has just been a privilege to share that and to be a witness of that. So it also it means I've been out talking with staff as well. And in my many conversations, the staff have all spoken about the tension, the tiredness and the pressure that they've endured while working remotely because they had a sense of responsibility to be there for students, to not let them down. Often, we dismiss or simply do not realise the importance of the virtue of diligence, do we? It makes a wonderful difference in our life. It would be so easy to take it easy, to be slack or lazy, especially when we have an autonomy or, not, uh, or no one actually holding us accountable while we're working at home. Yet the fruit of working hard remotely by the school staff and teachers has provided a clear message to all parents and students alike that we're here for you, we're supporting you, and we're caring for you. I like to think diligence is the work done in the quiet. When no one is looking, it is the preparation required for a future point in time. So this week, Despite the trepidation at school, it turned out to be a wonderful blessing. Students were happy, staff were happy, and I could actually see God's presence and blessing encapsulating the school. It was remarkable. Now this brings us to our scripture passage today, Proverbs 4, 20 to 27. Now along with Job and Ecclesiastes, the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament is a wonderful piece of timeless wisdom. The writer's aim here is to give guidance to the young and the young at heart, to help us find who God is and have him be our utmost focus in our life. 
So we're going to read Proverbs 4.27 now. And it says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from per uh, perversity. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Now this, mo this morning, I want to concentrate on the diligent component of these verses. What are believers to be diligent at? What are we to pursue with conviction, persistence and dedication? Now there's three areas that we're told in this passage of scripture and it's also repeated right throughout the Bible. Now these three areas encourages the believer to be diligent and these are in our spiritual walk, to be diligent in our works and to be diligent in our family. Now Proverbs 4, 20 to 27 encourages to pay attention to what we hear the state of our heart, what we say, what we see, and to personally examine ourselves. So look into us, look into our minds, personally examine ourselves and adjust our behaviour accordingly. So in the home group study notes I've put together, we're going to explore Proverbs 3.20 to 27 in a lot more detail. We're going to actually delve into each of those components that I looked at. But for us now, I want the passage to be a reminder that God wants to protect our walk, direct our walk, and perfect our walk. So the first aspect that God wants us to have is to be diligently obeying him. So it's our spiritual walk. So Proverbs is a wonderful personal spiritual inventory for us to see if we're really living an obedience to the Lord. Diligently obeying and seeing God is a reoccurring theme throughout the entire Bible. In fact, God demands diligence. You shall diligently keep the commands of the Lord your God. That's Deuteronomy 6.17. Deuteronomy 28.1 reads, If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And then Hebrews 11.6 shows that God takes diligence seriously. He rewards those who diligently seek him. God can see who is serious about seeking him. And we are to strive for the goals that he set for us. We are to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now Matthew 6.30 tells us this, prizing these things above all else. See, the diligent person's personal relationship with God grows and strengthens because of the effort he or she puts into learning from and obeying our Lord and Saviour. So I would like to now take this little bit of a moment to share my time with God in lockdown. Now, I've come to view this pandemic lockdown period as a wonderful opportunity that God has provided. A time when God invited me to do less for him, but spend more time with him. Now, I didn't think this at the time, but as I look back, what a blessed time indeed. And in preparation for today when Stephen asked me if I could do a sermon and keep it in the themes God led me straight to this virtue of diligence and God's reminded me and showed me and highlighted to me that God has been refining me transforming me through his love obviously but also a diligent effort on my part has been required also so what I've discovered is that my recent growth has come out of this deep, painful, mysterious, confusing and dark experience. These in-between times 
over which I've had so little control, when I have been tempted to stick to what I knew worked in the past, and I long to continue being a presence at the school, stay on the road that God led me. And yet the school phoned me and said, David, we can't have you in the school at this moment. The government's contacted us. There's too many people at the school. We could only have like seven staff members at school. So I was forced straight away to work remotely. 11 weeks later, I was working re remotely. Yet I found myself complaining when God began to call me to change the direction. I still wanted to work and do the same things I was doing in the school, trying to do them from home, and it just wasn't working, and I was getting frustrated. So when I tended to resist God in these times by simply getting busier or by adding something else to what I was trying to do, I, I, I came really close to missing this wonderful new opportunity God was preparing for me and for those that I worked with in the school. By relinquishing control and remaining with God, I've discovered this in-between time of confusion to be rich in insight and mercy. Doing less for God, but spending more time with God over this lockdown, on first glance, yeah, it does look like an empty, blurry, inactive time. Yet the time has turned out to be a place where significant kingdom advancements and personal transformation has taken place. God was preparing me for opportunities that I otherwise would have missed upon my return to school. See, I was fearful that all the hard work at school, the progress I made prior to lockdown would be lost and I'd be back to square one. You know what? The opposite actually happened. My positioning within the school from staff, teachers and students has so strengthened First thing that was said to me when I stepped onto the school grounds, it was so wonderful to see you, David. Thank you so much for the hard work you have done over this lockdown period for all of us. Wow, that just took me by surprise because I didn't realise the full impact that it was having. God did. All the conversations I had started off with a wonderful smile, a wonderful openness to engage in conversation with staff. It's been amazing, truly, truly amazing. So what did my time in lockdown do when God said to do less with me? Well, it was to spend more time with him. How did I do that? Well, I, dis I rediscovered what importance in, of a Sabbath is. That's your quality time with God one-on-one -on -one or with your family and God and owning that. doesn't matter what day of the week it is, but just take that day a week where you don't do any other kind of work. Just do things to recharge you and spend time with God. It also means relinquishing your control. Also learnt in this time as well as what it means to, I suppose, lead out of your marriage. What does that look like? Gee, there's a challenge right there, isn't there? To lead out of your marriage. So have your marriage be a place where you can grow and be strengthened to then go out and do God's will. Why? Well, God's will is, and, and Jesus talks about the church or his relationship with the church is what the relationship between a man and a wife needs to be in marriage. Geez, that's a challenge right there, eh? But that's what we are aspire to do. So it's a lifelong journey that we go on. So there's some aspects that God looked at me. Also, how else can I recharge in myself for my spiritual walk? So that, that's what I, I was spending my time with. Also, where am I weak? In areas of, of my life where I'm weak, where does God want to strengthen me? So that's what I was working on. So diligence, the next point um, God asks us to focus on is to being diligent in our work. So as Christians, we've been given some specific instructions on how God wants us to view our work or our occupation. Apart from being conscientious in our work and our effort, which is kind of what every boss wants us to have, every employee should be and put in a good day's work for a good day's pay. But God's instructions, however, incorporate a spiritual component. And a spiritual com component's important. Why? Because it's everlasting. So God's instructions in our work are to, uh, in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it tells us, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. 
Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to a... And, and sorry, I'm going to read that again. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. That's Colossians 3.17. And then in Colossians 3.23, it tells us, whatever you do, do your work heartedly for the Lord rather than for men. So as Christians, we're called our works are for God. They're not for others. They're not for the world. It's for God. It's through our, the way we work honours God. The, other, the third component was family. Diligence in our family. Now, Proverbs 3, 20 to 27 was, wind, was wisdom handed down from a father to his son. And then it's been handed down from generation to generation. By not hearing this wisdom, today's generation is missing out, isn't it? So diligence in our family is to be loving to our family, to guide our family to know God. We can't make them know God. They have to make and have that decision themselves. But we are to guide them. Also to be loving towards them and give them a role model of what a wonderful relationship is as well. That's part of what God's asking us to do in our family. But in addition to being a godly role model for our children, let's kind of expand our minds here a little bit. And let's include school ministry and also SRE or religious education. Together, let's help share this wisdom with today's generation. Why? Well, it takes a village to raise a child. I've got another slide, which is about... Next one. Uh, sorry, it's the SRE slide. Thank you. Here. Southern Illawarra School Ministry Board. I don't know if you've heard about this yet, but this was something that was on my heart about three years ago. I started talking with ministers in the local region. Can we have a ministry board to get a paid SRE teacher into school? Well, it was all progressing really, really well. And then a few ministers actually left the area or retired and it, it kind of fell down like a deck of cards, just crumbled in. But the dream and the vision never changed. And I'm just so excited to say that we've now got this board up and running. So it's from churches of Albion Park, Albion Park Rail and Oak Flats. And we're working together to establish a two day a week paid SRE teacher for Albion Park and Oak Flats High School. This is so exciting. This is actually helping to get God's word into the school and make a difference to transform lives. So I want to, in this slide here, we want to invite you to please join in our Zoom Vision Night, which is going to be on the 3rd of November at 7 p.m. You're going to hear stories of what's happening in the school and then also what's the vision for the school? What's the ultimate goal of this, um, of the ministry board and having paid teachers in the schools? So please join with me there. So let's expand our idea of what diligence in the family actually looks like. And then why do I, in, in wrapping up, I want us to let you know that God actually rewards the diligent. So finally, we see that being tenacious in our diligence to the end leads us to the ultimate prize. Now Jesus promises in Revelation 2.10, be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. Jesus made it clear that those who wished to be his disciples must be all in. And that's found in Luke 9, 20, uh, sorry, 57 to 62. So unless we are diligently pursue righteousness and obedience, we'll experience failure. The world is too appealing, distracting and tempting. There's too many excuses leading us away from our time with God or distracting us, moving us away from our time with God. That's why Jesus emphasised that the greatest command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind and your strength. And that's Mark 12, 28 to 31. 
In other words, life's ultimate goal is to diligently love the Lord. All actions flow from the posture of our heart. When we make diligence the common ingredient in everything we do and we choose to do godly things, we set a standard for ourselves that will propel us toward godliness and a, and a life full of kingdom opportunities. From my story today, I want you to be encouraged by it um, because really, personally, God's reminded me to seek him early and often in my daily walk, be willing to follow where he's going to lead me. And he continues to amaze me as each and every day unfolds. It's not easy, and I'm not pretending or pretending that it is. It's not. It's difficult. But, boy, gee, the rewards are unreal. Just the smile of change of hearts in a school. Man, it puts a spring in your step. It's just wonderful stuff. So in closing, I would like to pray for us now. And once I finish prayer, I'm going to invite Sam to come up and, and conclude with a final song. So I'd like to pray now. So, dear Lord, thank you for all the guidance you consistently provide. Please show me how to put your teachings into practice today. Help me to diligently seek you, to prioritise my time with you, and to be still with you. Align my heart with your heart, my thoughts with your thoughts, my actions with your actions. Show me how to draw near to you in every area of my life and make me eager to obey your call upon my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.